a pleasant day to everyone. For today's topic, we will be talking about stains and staining solutions. Before dwelling with the other staining solutions, let's have a brief recap regarding principles of staining. Remember class that on a chemical basis, certain parts of cells and tissues that are acidic in character, such as the nucleus, they have greater affinity for basic dyes, while basic constituents of the cells, such as the cytoplasm, take more of the acid stains. Individual variation of the tissue constituents regarding these properties will consequently produce variation in colors under the microscope. When you say biological stains or coloring substances, they are usually prepared from dyes which may be generally be divided into two categories. We have a natural dye and a synthetic or an artificial dye. Natural dyes class are those obtained from plants and animals previously utilized for dyeing of wool and cotton. Among the most common natural dyes available are hematoxylin, cochineal dyes and its derivatives, orsin and saffron. Let's start with hematoxylin. Hematoxylin class is a natural dye derived by extraction from the core or the heartwood of a Mexican tree known as hematoxylin campicana. It is by far the most valuable staining reagent used by the cytologist due to its powerful nuclear and chromatin staining capacity and its striking polychrome properties which may be produced with proper differentiation. As what I have said in your previous lecture, hematoxylin itself is not a stain. The active coloring agent is known as hematin, which is formed by the oxidation of hematoxylin in a process known as ripening. This is usually accomplished by exposing the substance to air in sunlight, thereby oxidizing hematoxylin through natural ripening. Such a process is slow and it takes as long as 3 to 4 months, sometimes can reach up to 6 months, but it can be accelerated by adding strong oxidizing agents such as hydrogen peroxide, mercury oxide, potassium permanganate, sodium perborate or sodium iodate, which converts hematoxylin to hematin, almost instantaneously by chemical oxidation in a process known as artificial ripening so that the staining solution is ready for use immediately after preparation. It is essential that the oxidant be used in correct amount since excessive oxidation or over-ripening leads to production of other useless compounds. Using the least amount of oxidant will result in satisfactory staining and longer life of the stain. Ripened hematoxylin is seldom used alone due to its inherent low affinity for the tissue itself. It is most frequently used in combination with alum, iron, chromium, and copper salts, which act as mordants catalyzing or forming links between the hematin stain and the tissue. Mordants are substances which combine with the tissue and the staining solution, forming a bridge that allows staining reaction to take place. Without mordants, no staining could occur. Some examples of mordants class include vanadium, Iron can be an oxidizing agent and a mordant, while alum is a mordant. Next, we have cochineal dyes. This is considered to be an old histologic dye extracted from the female cochineal bug, Cocos cacti. When cochineal dyes class are treated with alum, it can produce the dye carmine. It is widely used as a powerful chromatin and nuclear stain for fresh material and smear preparations. When combined with picric acid, you call it picrocarmine. It is extensively used in neuropathological studies. 
And when you combine it with aluminum chloride, so the stain is called Best's Carmine Stain. This, this is used for the demonstration of glycogen. We also have orsin. This is a vegetable dye extracted from certain lichens. By the way, class, lichens are a form of fungus or an algae, which are normally colorless, but which, when treated with ammonia and exposed to air, can produce blue or violet colors. It is a weak acid. It is soluble in alkali and is mainly used for staining elastic fibers. Litmus or the litmus paper is also obtained from lichens that are treated with lime and soda and exposed to ammonia and air. It is, however, not used as a cytological stain because of its poor staining property. It is instead used mainly as an indicator. Remember, a pH indicator. A litmus paper turns red if the solution is acidic, while it also turns blue if it is in an alkaline or a basic medium. Aside from natural dyes, we also have synthetic dyes. So these are sometimes known as coal tar dyes since they were originally manufactured from substances that have been taken from coal tar. They are derived from the hydrocarbon benzene and are collectively known as aniline dyes. Chromophores are substances with definite atomic groupings and are capable of producing visible colors. Simple benzene compounds which contain substances are known as chromogens. These are different from the dyes in that any color that they impart to the tissue is not permanent and can therefore be easily removed. Before a chromogen can properly be called a dye, it must have the property of retaining its color in the tissues. This property is acquired by the addition of an oxochrome. So, oxochromes are increasers or an auxiliary radical or substance which imparts to the compound the property of electrolytic dissociation, thereby altering the shade of the dye, enabling it to form salts with another compound and ultimately retaining its color. So the purpose of an oxochrome is to retain the color of the dye. So a chromophore's other word or other name is color bearers. A dye, therefore, should consist of a chromophore and an oxochrome group attached to a hydrocarbon benzene ring. The coloring property is attributed to the chromophore and the dyeing property to the salt-forming oxochrome. Depending on where the coloring substance or the chromophore is found, dyes may be classified into three main groups. That's acidic dyes, basic dyes, and neutral dyes. When you say acidic dyes, this is where the act coloring substance is found in the acid component and the inactive base such as the acid fuchsin is usually the sodium salt of a sulfonate of rose aniline. One example of such dye is picric acid which has the ability to form salt with an alkali. Picric acid is outstanding in the sense that it is the only substance so far that can fix, differentiate, or stain tissue all by itself. It may be employed as a counter stain to basic cytoplasmic stains, to acid fuchsin in Van Giesen's connective tissue staining, or to crystal violet for the microscopic study of fungi. It may also be used as a fixative, as a decalcifying agent, or as a tissue softener. Trichloroacetic acid, 
picric acid and chromium fixed tissues usually take in acidic dyes more readily. Basic cell structures such as the collagen, eosinophilic granules of leukocytes have an affinity for the acid dye ions and are regarded as acidophilic. For basic dyes, this is where the active coloring substance is found in a basic component that combines with the acid radical usually taken from sulfuric, acetic, or hydrochloric acid. An example of a basic nuclear stain is methylene blue, which may be used both as an indicator and as a dye. It is very widely used in microbiology for bacterial staining. Tissues fixed with mercury chloride and formaldehyde usually favor staining with basic dyes. Acidic cell structures such as the chromatin, mucus, cartilage matrix have an affinity for basic dye ions and are therefore regarded as basophilic. While for neutral dyes, these are formed by combining AQ solutions of acid and basic dyes capable of staining the cytoplasm and nucleus simultaneously and deferentially. Because they are made up of large molecular complexes, Neutral dyes are insoluble or barely soluble in water, but they are usually soluble in alcohol. Ethyl alcohol or acetic acid fixed tissues, on the other hand, readily take in both basic and acidic dyes. Examples of neutral dyes are Romanovsky dyes used in hematology, gem stain, and Irishman stain for leukocyte differentiation. Since we are done with both hematoxylin and eosin in our previous lecture, let's focus on the other stains used. Number one, we have acid fuchsin or picric acid from Van Giesen stain. This is a mixture of picric acid and acid fuchsin for the demonstration of connective tissues. Acridin orange is a basic acridin fluorochrome which permits discrimination between dead and living cells, giving green fluorescence for DNA and red fluorescence for RNA. Acridin red 3B is used to demonstrate deposits of calcium salts and possible sites of phosphatase activities, while alcyon blue is a complex water-soluble thalocyanin dye similar to chlorophyll, which stains acid mucopolysaccharides by forming salt linkages with them. It is an excellent stain because it is simple. It produces a striking blue color and it is resistant to various counter-staining procedures. It is more specific for connective tissue and epithelial mucin due to its use as an acid solution. There is also aniline blue. It is a cytoplasmic stain used for counter staining of epithelial sections, while basic fuchsin is a plasma stain utilized also for deep staining of acid fast organisms for mitochondria, for differentiation of smooth muscles with the use of picric acid. It is a main constituent of fulgens and Skiff's reagent for the detection of aldehydes, a Van Giesen solution for connective tissues, mucin, and for elastic tissue staining. Under basic fuchsin class comes carbolfuchsin, Coleman's fulgen reagent, the Skiff's reagent, and the Mallory's fuchsin stain. There is also Gomori stain for aldehyde fuchsin. Benzidine is a stain used for hemoglobin. Bismarck brown is used as a contrast stain for Gram's technique in acid fast and Papa Nicolau method and also for staining diphtheria organisms. We also have carmine. This is used as a chromatin stain for fresh materials in smear preparations. 
It is slightly soluble in water at a neutral reaction and usually kept in ammoniacal solution which changes its properties due to oxidation. It is usually combined with aluminum chloride to stain glycogen, as in Best's carmine solution. We also have celestine blue. This one is resistant to strong acid dyes and is recommended for routine staining of fixed sections, giving a good nuclear definition when used in conjunction with alum hematoxylin. Conger Red is best known as an indicator but may be utilized as a stain for axis cylinders in embryos. It is used as a 4% aqueous solution in Crudgen's method of staining elastic tissues, amyloid, and myelin. While for crystal violet, this is a nuclear or chromatin stain used for staining amyloid in frozen sections and platelets in blood. Gentian violet is the staining solution formed by the mixture of crystal violet, methyl violet, and dexterin. Gimsa stain is used for staining blood to differentiate leukocytes. Gold sublimate is the stain used for metallic impregnation made up of gold chloride and mercury chloride. Iodine is probably the oldest of all stains, originally used for microscopic study of starch granules. It stains amyloid, cellulose, starch, carotenes, and glycogen. It is widely used for removal of mercuric fixative artifact pigments and as a reagent to alter crystal and methyl violet so that they may be retained by certain bacteria and fungi. It may also be used in the form of aqueous or alcoholic solutions. An example of iodine is Gram's iodine and also Lugol's iodine. Janus Green B is an intravital stain used to demonstrate mitochondria. Malachite Green is a weekly basic dye used as a contrast stain for staining Ascaris eggs and erythrocytes, and is a bacterial spore stain. It is also used both as a decolorizer and as a counter stain. Methyl green stains chromatin green in the presence of an acid. It gives false positive reactions with certain secretions such as mucin. Well, for methylene blue, it is a common basic nuclear stain employed with eosin to provide marked differentiation of various structures in the tissue. It usually contains some azures or methylene violet. Polychroming involves the oxidation of methylene blue, resulting in loss of methyl groups and leaving lower homologs of the dye, such as the azures, and deaminized oxidation products such as the thiazoles. The resulting mixture of methylene blue, azures, and thiazoles is known as polychrome methylene blue. It stains nuclei blue while cartilage matrix, mucin, mast cell granules, and connective tissues generally take a reddish violet color. It is a valuable stain for plasma cells and may also be employed in cytological examinations of fresh sputum for malignant cells, as a bacterial stain for evaluation and differentiation of bacterial organisms for diagnosis of diphtheria and for vital staining of the nervous tissue. Methyl violet is a metachromatic dye formed whenever methylene blue is heated in fixed alkali or alkali carbonate, coloring nuclei of leukocytes reddish purple in the presence of methylene blue. While for neutral red, it is a basic dye recommended for observing cell granules and vacuoles of phagocytic cell 
and is employed in 1 is to 10,000 up to 1 is to 100,000 concentrations. Night blue is used as a substitute for carbofuxin in acid fast staining. Well, for orsane, as what I have said, it is an excellent stain for elastic fibers such as in Tynzer Una orsane method and is especially recommended in dermatological studies due to its ability to demonstrate even the finest and most delicate fibers in the skin. Osmium tetroxide Osmic acid, aside from being used as a fixative, may be used as a stain for fat. Although other substances are also stained simultaneously, thereby preventing specific staining of lipids to be done. Fat, which reduces osmium tetroxide to osmium dioxide, is stained black and may be demonstrated from the tissue by using chrome osmium solutions or by the frozen suction method. Picric acid is employed as a contrast stain to acid fuchsin for the demonstration of connective tissue as in Van Giesen stain, as a cytoplasmic stain in contrast to basic dyes, as a counter stain to crystal violet, and as a stain fixative. I mean, a tissue fixative and as a decalcifying agent. Prussian blue is the colored salt of ferric ferrocyanide normally utilized for the manufacture of paints, but may be used for microanatomical color contrasts of specimens and for the demonstration of the circulatory system by injection through intravital staining. Rhodamine B is used with osmic acid to fix and stain blood and glandular tissues. Silver nitrate is used in 10% aqueous solution to prepare various dilutions to be used in identification of spirochetes, reticulum, and other fiber stains. Toluidin blue is a nuclear stain for fixed tissues used as a substitute for thionine in fresh frozen tissue sections. It is recommended for staining of nissel granules or chromophilic bodies. Lastly, for Victoria blue, this is used for the demonstration of neuroglia in frozen sections. Oil-soluble dyes, or also known as lysochromes, are not real dyes in the usual sense of the word because they do not have oxochrome groups. They give color to lipids simply because they are more soluble in lipid medium of the tissues than in their medium of 70% alcohol. Oil-soluble dyes are available in the form of Sudan Black B, Sudan 3 and Sudan 4 or Sherlock R used for the demonstration of intracellular fats which are colored black, orange, and red respectively. In order to penetrate fats, the oil-soluble dyes must be dissolved in organic solvents although the solvent vehicle, usually ethanol, isopropanol, or propylene glycol, should be sufficiently dilute to avoid extracting the lipids themselves. Let's start first with the most sensitive of the oil-soluble dyes, that is Sudan Black. It possesses two secondary amino groups per molecule, making it a slightly basic dye which may cause nonspecific staining. Because of this molecular structure, Sudan Black has a much greater affinity for phospholipids than other lysochromes, coloring neutral lipids such as the triglycerides by simple dissolution of the dye. It has the added advantage of being a more sensitive coloring agent. The ability of fats to adsorb Sudan Black is related to dye concentration, temperature, and physical state of the fats. Maximal dye uptake occurs when fat reaches its melting point so that lipids that are liquid or semi-liquid at staining temperature will be stained while those that are crystalline or solid will not be affected by the dye. 
Sudan Black is prepared as a 0.5% solution boiled in 70% ethanol for 10 minutes under a reflux condenser and filtered before use. It is a very unstable solution class and should be discarded if the usual blue-black color turns brownish-black. It usually imparts a black color on intracellular lipids and is recommended for paraffin sections, especially for tissues fixed in formal calcium with post-chroming, demonstrating lipids that are resistant to paraffin embedding. Unlike the other Sudan dyes, Sudan Black B stains phospholipids as well as neutral fats. Sudan Black B does not stain crystalline cholesterol and free fatty acids tend to be soluble in the ethanolic dye bath. Sudan 4 or Charlock R is different from Sudan Black because it has no secondary amino group and it does not color phospholipids or the fine lipid droplets. It is prepared by saturating the dye in one part of 2% benzoic acid in 70% alcohol and one part of acetone, forming a very stable solution which may be used repeatedly as long as it is filtered. Addition of benzoic acid intensifies fat and prevents rapid deterioration of the solutions. It is recommended for staining triglycerides, giving them a deep and intense red stain. Sudan 3 was the first Sudan dye to be introduced into histochemistry. It is also fat-soluble and is good as a fat stain for central nervous system tissues, giving a less deep and lighter orange stain compared to the darker staining in Sudan 4, which gives it an Intense red stain. The chief solvents used for stains include water, which could always be distilled unless otherwise stated. We also have alcohol, that would be ethyl alcohol in various concentrations. We can also use methyl alcohol if to be used, which is usually absolute and is indicated especially in the preparation of blood stains for which reason it should be acetone-free. We have also aniline water, so that's 10 ml of aniline added to every one half to one liter of hot distilled water, shaken and then cooled and then filtered before use. Lastly, we can also use phenol that is in aqueous solution of 0.5 to 5%. Staining of tissues by dyes is accomplished through various types of bonds, some of which have been poorly defined in traditional biological literature. Here, basic principles of bonding are reviewed to establish uniform terminology and definitions consistent with the field of chemistry. The concept of charge, its presence or absence, that includes magnitude, um, extent of delocalization and potential for being displaced by outside forces, underlies all bonding phenomena. These same attributes influence solubility and resistance to extraction during dehydration of tissue sections. In here class are the tissue dye mechanisms or the nature of dye tissue interaction. The following stains are some of the examples per mechanism or interaction. For electrostatic mechanism that is used by neutral red and light green SF. For hydrogen bonding, that's carmine and Congo red. Physical staining for Sudan dyes because remember class, they are not real dyes. They just have a greater affinity to lipid medium, so physical staining. Well, for natural affinity, that's Janus Green B for intravital staining. It naturally stains the mitochondria. The nature of dye tissue interaction, that's chemical interaction, adsorption phenomenon, and 
differential solubility. Under chemical interaction, we have three groups. That's group-specific, an example of which is periodic acid skiff for carbohydrates. The highly specific class is Persian blue. Remember, the Persian blue is used to stain the storage form of iron. For adsorption phenomenon class, an example of which is dextran with iodine, when you say adsorption, that means it adheres to the surface of this tissue section. Compared to absorption, that means it's being absorbed. For adsorption, it adheres, so it just sticks, it just goes there but can be removed easily compared to absorption it is being taken in and lastly for differential solubility an example of which are the fat stains the sudan stains and also oil red o that's it for today thank you so much for listening i hope you've learned something new from me today Please like this video and don't forget to subscribe my channel so that you will be notified for new videos. May God bless us all and always keep safe. See you soon!